Welcome back. This is part two of the video series UV Cube Unwrapping for the Blender Game Engine. Okay, so in part two, uh, we're going to take a look at this cube. We mark seams in part one, then when we select all and we press U to unwrap, this is what we generally get. Now, if your unwrapping is angled like this, uh, you simply just press R. You can go ahead and rotate it. And then what you want to make sure is you want to make sure that it actually is inside the grid. Where it is inside the grid, like up here or down here or in the middle, that doesn't really matter. Um, Whatever is going to be your preference. Um, you can also press R for rotate and then type in 90 and you can rotate it a specific amount. Um, okay, so once you have it in here, you want to make sure that it's still all selected. And then you come down here to the UVs menu and you choose Export UV Layout. And that's going to save it as a PNG, which I did in the last video. Okay, I'm going to undo until I get my... There we go, back like that. Okay, so now in part two, we're going to go to Krita. And this is going to be our uh, image editing app. So I'm going to either say open file here. Um, if you don't see this, you can just come up to the file menu, choose open, and I'm going to go and navigate to my desktop where I made an unwrap file, which is going to look just like that. Okay, so um, there are a couple little weird glitches on the um, latest version of Krita on a Mac, so I will um, work through those. Uh, they're not bad, but they... Uh, they are a little weird. Okay, so this very first layer over here, that is my UV. So I'm going to go ahead and double click it. And there we go. Okay, so that's my UV unwrap. Okay, so the two important things that I'm going to show you how to do in this video is how to make a custom texture for one of these faces. And then I'll show you how to take a texture uh, that was downloaded off the web, like a brick texture or crate texture, something like that. So I'm going to start off with the custom texture. And I'm going to come over here, click on this little button here, and that creates a new layer. Um, the layers that I'm going to do are just going to be um, solid colors and numbers and letters, maybe. Um, so that way um, this video isn't too long. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this uh, 1. Okay, and I'll make my color picker. Go ahead and do it red. Let's do something like that. Okay. So I'm making my brush size bigger and smaller by holding on the shift key and moving my mouse. Now, unfortunately for this video, I do not have a pen and stylus, so you'll just have to be okay with that. Um, okay, so to get closer here, you can zoom in using your scroll wheel and then make your brush size smaller and just be careful. Now, I will show you that I'm going to go ahead and purposely go over the line, just so you can see how that works. Okay, um, and then I'm going to go ahead and choose a color that would show up, and I'm just going to simply draw a little number one. Now, I'm purposely drawing the number one. You could draw the number one on a different layer, um, and then that would give you even greater flexibility. Um, I'm going to just leave it on this layer here. Uh, because it's not really necessary. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and this is going to be two, and I'll just choose different colors. And the reason why I left it, um, why I went, why I overlapped, is because since layer two is on top of layer one, I can go ahead and I can just paint right on top. And you'll notice that on the sides, notice that I am going over a little bit. That's okay. I can go ahead and paint out here that's not an issue at all. Um, okay. Alright, so I'm going to quickly fill this in and I'm going to go ahead and do maybe one or two more uh, like this and then I'll, um, I'll come back real quickly just to make life a little bit easier um, and I should have mentioned this before is I'm going to take this UV unwrap layer and I'm going to drag it up to the top and by dragging it up to the top, of course, I can see my uh, lines, so I can kind of see where things are going. 
and then of course I can uh, trim back. You just have to really make sure that you're not painting um, on that layer. So just be mindful of that, and you'll be good to go. Okay. A fantastic little tip that Krita has is that when you are brushing, let me select layer three, this yellow one here. When you're brushing, um, on a Mac, you can hold down the command key, and that will be the eyedropper tool. So I can sample this magenta. Now I've got this yellow here. Um, I can press the letter E, um, and that will turn the any brush temporarily into an eraser, which is great. So I'm not actually changing tools. Um, I'm still in the brush tool. It's just up here. This is the erase mode turns on, and I'm good to go. So um, cleanup is a little bit easier. And then you just press E again, and now you're back into brush mode. Okay, so there are my terrible drawings there. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to take this yellow face here, and I'm going to purposely just spill over into um, the number two face, just so you can see what that's going to look like. Okay, what's interesting is that I'm using the eyedropper tool. It doesn't seem to be picking up the exact same color. That's very strange. Um, I'm not sure why. Okay, anyway, you can see that the yellow is spilling over into the two. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in for this uh, sixth face here, I'm going to bring in a texture that I've downloaded off the web. So I'm just going to uh, do File, Open, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in this... Um, create texture here. And there it is. So Krita, like Photoshop and other programs, puts all of the documents up here at the top so you can flip on these tabs and you can go ahead and see them. Alright, so on a Mac I'm going to press Command A and that is Select All and you might be able to see these little dashed lines going all the way around. Okay, and now I'm going to press Command C for Copy. I'll go back to my um, UV unwrap and I'll press command V to paste and it comes in pasted uh, you can see right here it says layer 7 pasted and you can see it's underneath everything we'll take care of that in a moment and the first tool I want is the move tool and that is T and I'm going to go ahead and drag it out and I'm just going to place it here underneath my UV unwrap layer there we go there we go um, now I haven't saved this yet, which is kind of dangerous. Um, it's still a ping file, and I want to save it as a Krita file that saves all the layers. So I'm going to do not file save as, or sorry, not file save, sorry, it's file save as, and um, I'm going to change the file type from a ping, I'm going to save it to a Krita document, and that's going to change the extension here to .kra. And that's going to be my uh, layers, okay? So I'm going to give it a little bit of a different name here. Um, I'm just going to call this one, uh, I'll just add in the word layers there, just so it's really straightforward. And I'm going to save it to my desktop again. Okay, so this is a, my master file that will actually allow me to... Um, come back in here and change all the layers and you always want to save yourself a layered version okay so I put the bottom uh, left hand corner right there in the square and then I'm gonna come over here to this tool over here it's called the transform tool um, and when you do that you get little control handles here so I can do I'm gonna hold down the shift key and when I hold down the shift key I'm gonna drag the top corner and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just drag it in and when you hold down shift it keeps the same height and width. Uh, that's called aspect ratio. And that makes sure that it doesn't stretch and distort. Now if yours isn't working, you can lift up on shift and you could do something like this. Um, you just want to be careful of distortion. Okay, good. Once you're done and you feel like it's um, pretty much all set, um, you can click on another tool and there you are. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just do file save. I've saved the, saved the layered version. All right, so now I'm going to leave Krita open just in case I need to come back to it. But I think I'm ready. So I'm going to do File, 
save as one last time. I'm going to change it back from a CRUDA document back into a PNG. And this time I'm going to change the name just so I know. And I'll just add in the word final now. So it's a final PNG. Hit save. All of this is fine. And I'll hit OK. All right. So in one more moment, I will go back into Blender. All right. So we're back for the very last part. And this is how to get the image back into Blender. So we've already done the toughest part, which is the unwrapping. Um, we don't have a material, though, for UV. Um, unwrapping you have to have a material and a texture so let's take care of that um, I'm also going to change my 3d viewport from wireframe uh, to textured mode so we can see that right away so you can either press Z and choose material or texture um, or you can come down here and click on this little pop-up menu and choose material or texture I've got material here um, okay so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to come to my material panel and I don't have a material, so I'm going to say new, and I'm just going to call this, um, I'll just call this number cube. Then I'm going to go to the texture panel, which is the red and white checkerboard, and I'll say new texture. Okay, and I'll call it number cube text. And I'll scroll down here and come to this category here called image and I'll choose open and if you're having a tough time or you're just tired like I am um, and you're having a tough time reading uh, all of your images or if you have a lot of images right up here uh, you will see three little squares and if you choose the third square which looks like four little squares you'll actually get an image preview of your um, of your images your textures so it's uh, it's really nice just going to go ahead and double click and you'll see that it pops in um, nice and easily. Now it's not showing up here in my UV window, so how do I do that? So I'm going to come down here and you'll see three buttons, open, new, and then you'll see this little uh, image browser right here. And if I click on that, it'll show me um, basically all of my images that I have loaded up. And I'll just choose that, I'll zoom out, and there is my UV map. And here it is here as well. Um, now my lighting is not great, so I'm going to just tab back into object mode. I'm going to select my light. It's a default light, and instead of me fidgeting with the light and moving it around and you know changing it side by side, I'm just going to change the kind of light it is just for now. So I'm going to select the light. I'm going to come over here to the right and click on the lamp panel, and I'm just going to change it into a hemi light. And so that way it just um, it works. And then later on, I can go ahead and change it back. Okay, so you'll first you'll see that my five is upside down, my one is on its side. Um, you can see that the three is on its side. Um, things are not great. So how do I fix that? Okay, so I think the very last thing I need to do now is just fix these individual sides. So actually, the four is okay. All right, so I'm going to tab back into edit mode on my cube. I'm going to select the face. Uh, I'm in face mode now. Um, if you need to get into face mode, you can either on the keyboard press Control Tab and choose face mode, or you can come down here and you'll see these three little panels here where you can choose from vertex mode, edge mode, and face mode. I'm in face mode and I've got the three selected, and you'll see the three is selected over here. Um, with the three selected here, um, and I'm just realizing. I forgot to do a step inside Krita. Uh, what I forgot to do was I forgot to turn off and hide um, my UV layer. So I think that's shame on me. I'm uh, tired and so I'm seeing it. Okay, well, the good news is that you can't really see my UV um, unwrapping over here. So it's, it's actually, it's okay in this scenario. How to fix that though, is that if I went back to Krita, what I should have done is I should have, before I saved it, I should have come over here and clicked on the UV unwrap layer and hit it just like that. That's what I should have done. And it also, notice how my crate is kind of um, lighter in color there. It makes the crate and all the colors look richer. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So 
do it like that. I'm going to go ahead and do a file save as. Make sure it's. The, I'm going to name it the exact same thing. So watch this. All right. So it's the exact same name. I'm going to go back to Blender. Now check this out. This is pretty cool. If you don't know how this uh, works, so I've got a new version of the same image texture. I've got an updated version. So if I come back over here to textures and scroll down here, right here under image, you'll see it says source. And under source, there's a little folder icon to load up a new image. But next to it, there's a little double arrow. And if I click on that, it basically just says reload, um, just like you're reloading a web browser. So there we go, and it looks better already. Okay, so how to rotate the three. So now that the, the three is selected, I just come over here to my UV window and I press R and I can manually rotate it. And I can see what direction I need to rotate it in. Now I don't want to manually do this because that's not going to be very precise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press R and I can type in 90. And then I can just left mouse click to accept and then there we go. Now if I, go, if I make a mistake, I just went to the wrong direction. I could do R and then do negative 90, and then I could do that as well. Okay, I don't want to do that. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So now I just need to go around and select the different faces and just do R and type in. Um, I'm typing in 180 degrees if you didn't see that. And there we go. And of course, I'll fix the number one. And just remember, type in negative if you find out you're going in the wrong direction. OK, now, um, if, if I decided that I did not like the yellow spilt onto the number two, uh, what I could do to try to fix that is I could come over here with the face of the two selected and I could actually press S and I could actually scale this down and then grab it and move it over and you'll now see that there's no yellow showing up at all. Um, I could also um, I could also come back into vertex mode um, let's see actually I don't need to come into vertex mode sorry in the UV image editor, down here at the bottom, um, you actually have the same exact uh, selection modes here. So uh, right now I'm in vertex select mode. So I could hold down shift and right mouse click and I could select these two vertices here and I could just press G and grab those and I could move those uh, anywhere I want. You'll see if I go back here into yellow territory, it does show yellow, but I could just do something like that. And then there we go. It does make the two bigger, uh, but that's something you'll kind of have to deal with. Um, the real solution would be to go back to credit and fix it. Okay, last but not least, um, my crate is really shiny. So how do we take that shine off? You're going to come back over here and you're going to go to the material panel, which looks like a little beach ball. And you're going to scroll down until you find a category called specular. And you go to the intensity. And right now it's at 50% or halfway. I'm just going to drag it down to zero, and you'll see it took the shine off, and now my colors are richer, and there we are. Okay, so this is set up for the game engine, so if I were to press P for play, um, that's what it's going to look like in the game engine. All right, so I hope this helps you out, and you can literally make every single face be custom, um, make it look better than what I did, of course, um, but now you can go ahead and do, I could spray, you know, I could paint the word danger on here, um, or health pack or something like that, and it could be used in the game engine. All right, I hope this helps you out, and I will see you in the next video.